Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to do the long awaited exam prediction video for this year's June 2023 rewrite exams. Now remember, these are just my predictions, my assumptions of what we're going to see in the paper based off of what they've asked on previous years and also what I feel if I was an examiner, I would ask as well. I have experience marking final papers, so I sort of have an insight into what examiners are looking for these days and how they actually want to answer the questions. Now, if you are watching this video and you see anything where you think, oh, I don't remember learning that or did we go over that? Don't forget, you have two resources available to you. One, you have my whole grade 12 playlist, which covers every single topic, but also I have that practice exam playlist where I've walked through and I've gone through past paper questions for you to sort of look over and practice with me so you can see how to answer them for full marks. So let's get into the first section of the paper, which is going to be multiple choice. Now, in multiple choice, many things can happen, and there's generally a pattern of how they like to ask things. This year, I'm seeing us lean towards things like disorders in the eyes, disorders in the brain, and uh, sometimes uh, we see a lot of um, mathematical questions that you might have to calculate some things in, but I also see a lot of homeostasis questions. Now, I am putting up some examples alongside of me here for you to have a look at and compare, and perhaps Perhaps you go and practice these ones that I've put alongside me so you can get a feel of what I'm thinking. I do see a lot of multiple choice on like homeostatic controls for things like insulin and glucagon, um, but don't just focus on those. I would also go and have a look at things um, like um, adrenaline, uh, things like our endocrine system and how the endocrine and the homeostatic functions together because they're glands and you know homeostasis of the body so I would spend some time going over those two things. Now in terms of terminology remember this is a big indicator of how well you are going to do in the exam. If you're practicing for your upcoming exam and you're not getting 7 out of 7 or 10 out of 10 for your terminology you are really going to struggle to get that distinction because terminology is an indicator of how well you know your knowledge and how you can apply your knowledge. Now the terminology that I see appearing in this one is definitely going to be a little bit more uh, like reproduction heavy. Um, I'm thinking things like implantation, morula, blastosis, you know, those kinds of words, fertilization, fallopian tube, those kinds of words I'm thinking are going to show up quite a bit in the terminology section, but I'm not just going to focus on those. I would also go and look at some of your thyroid hormones, thyroxine, um, the pituitary gland. So I'm um, again seeing that there's a bit of a pattern here that maybe this year homeostasis is really going to shine through in this paper. And as we know, homeostasis, it's not the easiest topic um, because it does overlap with a lot of other topics, the nervous system and also the endocrine system. So I think don't overlook homeostasis this year. Put a lot of effort into studying those topics. Now we are still in section one, but now we're moving into more of like the diagram questions and every year they take turns doing ear and then eye and then ear and then eye. And sort of following that pattern this year, it should be an eye question. In other words, you're going to see things like labeling the eye, you are going to give functions of the eye, um, something alongside here, although this particular question that I've put alongside me here has a lot more longer uh, answers to it because I've taken it from uh, question two or three, so it's a little bit longer. But that's what I'm seeing this year. Um, but I will say this, if the eye doesn't appear in question one, it will appear in the exam, okay? Because it's a really important section and they're not, not going to ask about it. So if it doesn't appear immediately, I want you to know that the eye can appear later. And like I said, there has been a big emphasis on damage to the eye and then how that affects the processes. And so I'm going to say this now, that if this particular question doesn't happen in question one, but it happens in question two or three later, they're going to ask you functions of things, and then they're going to say like, well, how does that affect accommodation if it's broken? Or how does that affect, you know, your night vision or your color vision or, or something like that? Um, I see it a lot, 
and I think that's what you need to be ready for is to explain those processes accommodation and your papillary mechanism especially what happens if they weren't working or applying them to a situation now one other thing that i am preempting in this exam which again they were doing very regularly over the years and now they stopped which makes me suspicious because when they stop doing a question for a while it does mean that it's going to like pop up again right and that's going to be the reflex question you know like a reflex arc explaining that getting a diagram of that they didn't ask it last year um i thought they were going to ask it last year i mentioned it in that prediction video and they still didn't ask it which leads me to believe that it's potentially going to creep up on us and so i again i want you to be very aware that they could ask a reflex question um and they also love again to make that an application question saying something like well, if the reflex is broken somewhere, like let's say, for example, the motor neuron is not working for the reflex, how will the reflex be affected by that? So you would explain things like, well, I can, I can experience the sensation, like I feel the sensation, but I will not respond, so I won't move away, and so the reflex will not be successful. Um, something like that, I think we need to be very prepared for in this upcoming exam. So now let's talk about A, B, both or none questions. Again, this is all around terminology and knowing terminology really well, because what do they do? They like to ask you words that are similar to one another. And what I'm seeing this year is potentially like reproductive strategies coming out, like the difference between ovovipary and ovovipary. So like, what are the differences there? And because the spelling is so similar between ovipary and ovoviparous, it's so similar, you really need to know the differences in spelling and then the differences in function. Another thing I'm seeing in our terminology and also in the A, B, both or none is going to be differences in nerve structures. Like what's the difference between the axon and the dendrite, you know, because often we confuse those two with one another. Or um, what is the purpose of myelin? You know, it's a question we don't often get. Um, and so that's why I think you need to focus in on those unusual structures, um, but also the fact that we often confuse words with one another. And we see this too in meiosis, but remember meiosis is not in this paper anymore. To remind everyone who is rewriting for the first time, meiosis has been moved to paper two exclusively. Now we're going to move into the longer questions and we're going to start off with what might be in question two and question three. Starting off with the question I put alongside here, which is going to be about the female reproductive system. Now, I think that it's going to be in two parts. Um, one part of the female reproductive system is going to be about um, eugenesis, you know, creating uh, the gametes. Um, and then a bit of a shift in focus later on, but first focusing in on the gametes, right? Making the gametes, the menstrual cycle, that is always a very, very common question, so please be ready for it. And the other question that I think will come up this year is going to be something around the amniotic sac, the fluid, the placenta, the umbilical cord, and so you need to be prepared for one of these kinds of questions too. In other words, we need to put a bit of focus on implantation in particular. Now, the next question that I think is going to come up in some format is going to be an application question on the menstrual cycle. Now, this is everyone's worst nightmare because one, it is the hardest topic that we do. And number two, it's an application question, which means they're giving you like a real world um, event and then they're asking you to apply it. And I know that that's scary and it's hard. And I've put up a past question where they asked about how the birth control pill can affect the menstrual cycle and they have a graph and they have an explanation and we've got to prepare for this. Okay, we need to be able to do this. Now, I think this year they are probably going to ask you something around the female reproductive system not working properly and then taking a, a pill to fix that for, via hormones. They might even ask you something about progesterone only pills, pills that are given to women who are breastfeeding um, and how that regulates um, their menstrual cycle so they don't fall pregnant. But I do see an application question coming up like this for the female reproductive system. So we've got to prepare for the worst and we've got to practice these questions as they come up. 
Now, moving on to our next potential question two or question three is going to be one of the homeostasis questions. Now, I'm in two minds about what the homeostasis question is going to be this year. The first thing is, I think it might be temperature. Now, I have used this example next to me here alongside about how we go through homeostatic control and we maintain our temperature. I want to remind you also that in every exam, you may be asked to draw something, right? So it's going to be a graph, it's going to be a table, or it's going to be an actual drawing of a structure. And I'm seeing a pattern of putting a lot of graphs in paper one. So potentially the homeostasis question provides a perfect topic for graphs because often you'll be able to plot like the surface skin temperature of somebody um, or you'll be able to plot the uh, carbon dioxide levels of their blood in a graph. So we've got to remember to have our graph drawing instruments ready as well because graphs are really important. And that might be the one homeostatic question about temperature, you know, thermoregulation, con, uh, vasoconstriction, vasodilation. Um, the other one that I'm thinking about is linked to salt and water. And I've put this old past paper question on. They haven't asked it in a really long time. Again, they don't like to ask the same questions over and over again. So questions take breaks and then they research. Um, for example, the homeostatic control question in the 2022 paper one paper last year was carbon dioxide. And that hasn't been around for a long time since maybe I want to say 2020 or 2019. So that's a really long time since they've asked it. And so you see how things sort of resurge over time. I think that might be the other question that you need to prepare for in this exam. Now, last but not least, for paper one, question two or three, I'm not really sure where it's going to be, but it's going to be in there, is a reproductive strategy question. It used to be just like animal pictures and then what kind of reproduction strategy is this animal and what kind of uh, reproduction strategy is that animal? I think it's going to be an application question. It's evolved to become that now because every year it seems to be an application of this. Like uh, at last year it was about fish and their reproductive strategies and how um, you know external and internal fertilization differ and that kind of thing. So I do think that's going to make a resurgence. I think maybe they're probably going to go with egg laying animals this year and they're going to ask questions about eggs, whether it be drawing an egg, labeling an egg, um, or explaining how um, eggs improve survival um, or why we have eggs, something along those lines and why or maybe even contrasting the difference between oviparous animals and ovoviparous animals. So I think there's going to be something about eggs this year. So I think we need to be very clear on the differences between these two reproductive strategies. So the next really common question that I'm seeing a lot of is, of course, a brain cross-section question, right? So they give you a brain, it's cut in half, maybe you have to label structures, right? Um, and it could be like the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the medulla oblongata, and they also like to overlap that with endocrine a lot uh, because the two go hand in hand, you know, one is fast nervous system, endocrine, slow hormone system, and they do work together. I mean, if you think about it, the pituitary gland is inside the brain, it's right here. And so there is some sharing of roles together. So they do like to overlap that. Um, and, you know, they still like to overlap the brain with its functions, right? Like, how is it connected to the eyes? How is it connected to the ears? So knowing the regions of the brain, the functions of the different parts of the brain is important because they might ask those extension questions. And often those are the questions that we're getting wrong and we don't know how to answer. So make sure you can tell me more than just that's the cerebellum. Tell me what does the cerebellum do? What else is the cerebellum associated with? Oh, homeostatic controls, right? Like breathing and heart rate. So knowing that is really important. So you can ask those extension, you can answer those extension questions a lot better. The next question that I see in this exam is definitely going to be a plant hormone question of some type. Now, they have really liked the alternative hormones recently, like abscisic acid and gibberellians, so please pay close attention. But they do also like these classic questions of geotropism and phototropism. 
Now, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe with your notifications on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And I want to say good luck for your exams. Make sure you prepare very well. And please, the best practice that you can do is past paper questions. There is nothing that will get you more ready than doing question after question after question, but also studying the memo seeing what the memo looks like and what the memo wants. Because if you understand what they want from you, you'll be able to give them the right answer for full marks every time. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.